Hello, we are here in the municipality of La Calera, broadcasting from the Nawa Nursery. I am Dirnel Pinzon, a veterinarian, canine trainer, and technician in assisted interventions with canines. Together with our work team, we want to show you the different obstacles that we work with in these facilities and how you can learn to work with them from your own homes. We will use treats, our positive attitude and caresses and rings. We will use treats, our positive attitude and caresses as reinforcements to work with our dogs. Right now, our partner Diego is working with Macarena on the hoop obstacle. It's a normal hoop, similar to a hula hoop, but we start it low so the dog can start from the most accessible part and learn to get past the obstacle. There are different methods for the dog to perform this exercise. One of them is to avoid using something that the dog receives daily as food. For example, if the dog consumes concentrate every day, we will not use it as a reward. Instead, we can use small pieces of meat cooked without salt, such as chicken, cookies, or even fruits such as apples, mangoes, or pears. The most important thing is to avoid using bags and instead, preferably use a jacket with large pockets or a fanny pack. Once we have this, we will proceed as follows. Firstly, we place the dog in front of the obstacle and we will guide it with food. We will place the food for the dog to pass, and once he does, we will reward them. We will repeat the process on the return, and again we will reward the dog. Another option is to guide the dog using a leash that directs it towards the obstacle. Once the dog passes, we will reward them and give them a caressing pat. It is always important to reward the dog with our positive attitude, as this plays a crucial role in working with the dog. The main objective of the exercise with the hoop is to teach the dog to pass the obstacle, gradually increasing the height. We will start with the low hoop and then we will raise it. The most important thing is that the dog associates this activity as something positive, so we'll always reward them with something that they like. This type of training helps the dog to gain confidence and allows it to face more challenging obstacles in the future, such as the tunnel or the ramp. These exercises require a little more security from the dog. Here we are in front of the jumping obstacle, where we work so that our dogs require security when jumping a barrier of a certain height. We have our friend John with his dog positioned in front of the obstacle. John guides him and has rewards, showing a positive attitude. John can head towards the obstacle, leading the dog and rewarding him once he gets through it. We can also use the approach I'm going to show with our canine companion. I position myself on the side of the obstacle, showing him something interesting or that the dog likes. Then we encourage them to get over the hurdle, and once they do, we reward them again. We repeat the process in the opposite direction, and reward the dog. In addition to the reward, we also offer them caressing pats. It is important to always have a reinforcement that the dog likes, be it a ball, toy, or a snack. It is also crucial that our hand moves laterally, without sudden movements. Now John shows us his approach, which is to face the obstacle. When a dog performs an exercise on its own and is not requested, it is important to reinforce it since it is proposing to do something to earn something which is positive.
John stands in front of the obstacle and guides the dog, as we have seen. Unlike the previous dog, this dog shows more anxiety about food. John touches my palm because I'm the one to go ahead and treat the dog. The quality of the treat that we give is important since it must be something that the dog likes and motivates them to carry out more actions. In addition, our attitude plays a fundamental role. We're going to go through again, back and forth, with John. This is a way of showing how our dogs gain confidence when going through obstacles creating daily routines. It does not require much time. We can do it by getting them up and down from a chair or teaching them to go up and down obstacles in the park, even to go under them. These activities give them confidence, and as a result, we will have more confident and responsive dogs. The idea is that our dog works on routines that give it security. That is, the dog is not afraid of climbing on unstable surfaces. Another important exercise is teaching them to enter a dog crate known as a tunnel. It is a hollow surface with a smooth and generally stable interior. One person stands in front of the obstacle and the other at the other end, crouching. One person stands in front of the obstacle and the other at the other end, crouching. The canine handler calls the dog and when it comes through the tunnel, it gets rewarded with a pat, a word and a reinforcement like a cookie. If the dog has difficulty entering, we support and guide it. The dog is motivated to quickly pass the obstacle thanks to the bond with the handler and the treat that is offered. We use flat and long guides to be able to handle the dog with ease and distance, avoiding tangles. If the dog gets distracted, we can easily control it and recover it calling it and repeating the exercise. In case the dog cannot overcome the obstacle or has some fear, we place the lead through the obstacle and gently guide it towards us. When they pass through, we reward them. These resources help us work with dogs through obstacles, ensuring they overcome them and don't see them as something negative. When training our dogs on the street, it is essential that they respond to the call and do not chase other dogs that run past. If we are training Olaf, and a dog runs down the avenue, we can stop Alaf by stepping on the leash and calling him. We reward him for not passing or chasing the other dog. Therefore, the call is very important. In this exercise, Natalia positioned herself behind the tyre and crouched down, which is known as responding to the call with hidden guidance. The handler will stand behind the obstacle and the dog may know where he is. 
which facilitates the exercise. Cool. The idea is that the dog does not find it difficult. We will work in a straight line, starting with 5 steps, then 10, 15, and so on. In this routine, it is important to stand at a distance and call the dog by its name and command. An assistant, as in my case, can hold the dogs while the person calls them. And when the dog comes, it is rewarded with a pat, an encouraging word and food. If the dog does not come, the lead is used to guide it to the person. In our day-to-day, -day, routines are important, such as taking the dog to the park or allowing them to relieve themselves. Creating routines strengthens the bond. Remember that, when working in the street, it is advisable to use a leash 2 to 4 meters long so that the dog can reach the person who calls it. Here we can see how strong the bond is between dogs and their owners or handlers. If the dog does not come to the call, it means that the bond between you is not that strong. For a dog, it is important that going to the call is something kind, positive and rewarding. We should not scold our dogs by calling them by name when we are upset. We should not scold our dogs by calling them by name when we are upset. We must take this into account since it has an impact when performing basic exercises such as going to the call. Thank you for your attention and follow us on our social networks which appear on the screen. You can also learn exercises and routines to work with your dogs on a day-to-day -day basis and keep learning. Bye and thank you.